Today I am going to show you the surgical removal of an impacted mandibular third molar. Clinically, the tooth is not visible in the oral cavity. Radiographically, the tooth is mesially tilted. The apex of the root is close to the mandibular canal and the bone distally is at the level of the distal cusp of the tooth. I apply pressure over the site of injection using a cotton bud that is soaked with a topical anesthetic. Application of pressure along with the topical anesthetic leads to a profound topical anesthesia and the patient will not feel the needle prick at all. When I aspirate the syringe before inferior alveolar nerve block, the aspiration comes out as positive. So I withdraw the needle out of the tissue and administer the inferior alveolar nerve block with a new syringe. I aspirate in two planes and deposit local anesthesia for inferior alveolar nerve block. For a detailed video on inferior alveolar nerve block, watch this video on the channel. Now keep in mind that I have not discarded the syringe with positive aspiration. I will use that syringe for local infiltration. For lingual nerve block, I withdraw the needle up to half the length and aspirate. You can see that there is a drop of blood that came in as aspiration. This is mostly because of the bleeding from the earlier positive aspiration into the pterygomandibular space. The fact that there is no active influx of blood in the syringe on aspiration means that the needle is not inside a blood vessel so local anesthesia can be deposited safely. I apply pressure with topical anesthetic for buccal nerve block then I deposit the local anesthetic agent. I am now administering local infiltration with the syringe that had positive aspiration. The area where I am depositing LA solution does not have any major blood vessels so there is no chance of a intravascular injection. I ask the patient whether she feels numbness in the lip and tongue region. She responds affirmatively. Then I lightly poke the blunt end of the periosteal elevator on the contralateral side so that the patient knows what the actual pain feels like. I do this so that the patient can clearly differentiate between the pain and pressure experienced during the surgery. And then I check for the signs of buccal nerve block in the buccal tissue adjacent to third molar. I check for signs for inferior alveolar nerve block in the region apical to the premolars. Then on the lingual tissue, I check for the signs of lingual nerve block. The patient does not have any pain as all the blocks have worked fine. I am palpating the anterior border of the ramus to get an idea about the angulation between the body and ramus of the mandible. This helps with the proper placement of the distal extension of the Watts incision. I then place the Watts incision. For more detailed exploration on this, read my article on this topic. I will leave the link to this article in the description section. I start reflection of the mucoperiosteal flap from the anterior releasing incision and then I proceed backwards making sure that I do not tear the periosteum. A torn periosteum can lead to unnecessary intraoperative bleeding which can be a nuisance for the surgeon. You can see that only the cusp of the tooth are visible. Using the HP6 round bar, I am removing the bone adjacent to the crown of the third molar to properly visualize the tooth. We can see that the crown is now clearly visible. I then create ditches in the bone around the crown using the same round burr. Then I connect the ditches with the 702 straight burr to create bone gutter around the tooth. I try to elevate the tooth using a Copeland elevator but due to presence of excess bone distal to the third molar, I am not able to deliver the tooth out of the socket. So I push the elevated tooth back into the socket and then I remove 1-2 to two mm bone distal to the third molar with a straight butt. I 
try to deliver the tooth out of the socket using the Copeland elevator, but still the tooth is getting stuck by the distal bone. As I have already cut enough bone distally, I can just use a third molar forcep to pick the tooth out of the socket. This is the extracted tooth. You can see there is a dental follicle present in the socket. I hold it with an artery forcep and cut it with the number 15 blade. This is how the socket looks like after the tooth removal. I then irrigate the socket with normal saline under high pressure to force out any debris that may have fallen inside during the procedure. I then close the flap with two simple interrupted sutures. This is how the flap looks like after it is sutured back into its position. The pressure pack should be sitting over the extraction socket and not interfere with the occlusion. In the end, make sure that the patient's face is clean of any blood spots. This is the surgical site one week after the surgery. Meet my patient who is also my student. She is not only an eager learner but also a willing participant in our educational journey as she graciously offered herself as the patient for a detailed surgical demonstration.